close your eyes and watch your breath each time it comes in. And again and again, you have to stay with the breath. You have to train the mind. Because the mind, if it's not trained, can create all kinds of problems. It's like a, an animal we have in the house. So it hasn't been trained, it's going to create messes everywhere. And the mind has the ability to create all kinds of messes. You can be in a really fine set of circumstances, and the mind can make itself suffer if it's not trained. But if you're well trained, then you can even be in bad situations and still not suffer from them. It's learning how to control the movements of the mind so they don't create a lot of trouble. So the first thing you've got to do is give it something good to stay with. The breath is a good place to stay because it's always there. And you can play with the breath. In other words, you can change how long it is or how short, how deep or shallow, how heavy or light, to see what feels good for the body right now. After all, the breath is the force of life. It's bound to have a good impact on the body if you let it have a good impact. Otherwise, it just keeps the body alive, but doesn't do much more than that. But if you think of the breath energy flowing through the body in a way that's all-encompassing and harmonious, nourishing to the body, it's going to have a good effect. It's going to make the body, here in the present moment, a much pleasant, more pleasant place to stay. That makes it easier to train the mind, because you can watch it as it moves from the present moment into something else. Why is it moving? What is it looking for? You want to see the intentions behind those movements to get a sense of which intentions are skillful and which ones are not. And it's right there that the mind gets trained, learning how to let go of the unskillful ones and develop the skillful ones. It's so in this way the mind can create not only a nice place to be in the present moment, but it can go deeper and deeper and find a really solid foundation for its happiness. And at the same time, its happiness is something that doesn't cause any tr trouble to anybody else. So it's a goodness that's all around, something that we should all develop. If you wait for other people to train their minds so the world will be good, you can wait until your dying day and it's not going to happen. So you start with yourself. At the very least, you make sure that this mind is not creating suffering for yourself. And you provide a good example for others. This is how they can train their minds, too. It is possible to live life even in this human world with all its aging and illness and death. It's possible to live in this life without suffering and without causing any harm to anybody else. The world needs lots of these examples. So each of us can start from providing this one as a good example, this mind, this body, this speech. That's where all the good things in the world start.